Yep. So um, for this video, I just want to show off uh, state management in C Sharp and the Microsoft Bot framework. Um, it's actually really simple to do, but I thought I might show a work and demo um, of how it all works. So here I've got the Bot framework emulator up and running. I've got the project running here as well. And um, what I'm just going to do is type some stuff in, uh, and then I'll go a little through code. So for this, it asks your name. So name is name. Age is blah. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's not doing any checks. It's just to put something on the screen, and then it writes out your name is name, and you and you are blah. That's <laughs> a little insulting, I think, but um, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> um, it is what it is. So uh, code-wise, all of these things is actually outlined on the blog, but maybe worth worth a, a bit more explanation, I think. So um, one of the key places that needs to be edited or at least modified to get this working is actually, oops, not here, on the start of the CS, um, there's a method here called create conversational state. Um, basically, what it's going to do is create another conversational state and add it to the services. Um, so this is going to be injected in later on into the application uh, as a, well, it's actually a bot state is, is what its inherited type is, um, but it's a conversational state object. Uh, here I'm using memory storage as a storage later, well, the data later for, for this. So memory storage, I think it points to local storage someplace. I'm not quite sure, but I have a funny feeling it's a temp folder in my C directory or wherever the main directory is. Um, I'm pretty sure you can upgrade this and put it into something like Cosmos if you want to. Um, and inject it in that way, or create it up or on that way. It does just look for, I think it's just a, uh, an ice storage object, and I assume there's probably an ice storage version of Cosmos, um, or something like that. So I'd, I'd imagine this bit is a bit upgradable, for, but for these this local storage, I think it's fine. Um, local storage seems fine. We're creating it as a singleton, and then right at the bottom of configure services, um, which is called conversational state. I wouldn't really worry about this. <laughs> That's just some logic I put in for the bot. So when the user sends out a response, um, it does some shenanigans and returns the like question and then does some tokenization on it. But basically, removing some strings and some stuff replacing the user input. It's nothing too complicated and it's definitely not important for the demo. It's just, yeah, just in case someone asks about it. Um, the actual conversational data Object itself, itself is very straightforward. I put it as a class. <laughs> I just string name, string age, and this is a conversational state enum that I set up that's literally just used in the response service manager. Response manager service, sorry, um, to just manage responses. It's not really doing anything major. It's just literally saying, what's the current state? Display some text. It, it actually just looks like this. Three states, ask some names, ask some age. It's not really important, it's just something I put in to add a bit of flair to really show off that this isn't just grabbing a string and then, you know, parroting it back to the user. It's, it's actually saving and doing something in the background. Um, something fairly important, I think. Yeah, um, next is on to our state bot. Well, I'll call it state bot, you can call it whatever you want, but in here I'm injecting in the bot state. That's the conversational state object. Uh, where are we at? This object here. Um, its base class is bot state. I've injected in here as bot state, um, bot state object, and uh, yeah, just set up the references in the end to resource manager. Not important. Um, what is important though, well, the next most important thing I guess is the send current state. Well, I've actually put it into its own function because you see it gets called here on turn on members added async, which is the the first I think it's the first method that gets called in the bot, bot conversation flow. And then it also gets called in, uh, I'm just gonna look this up. Yeah, on message activity async as well. Um, so when we get a message in from the user, uh, or response rather, response from the user, that's that's what this does. Um, because I mean, it's gonna do the same action over and over again. Why put it in several places, we just put it in one. Um, similar situation to what I've done with this, but I'll get on that in a second. Um, so here, what I'm doing is just saying um, create a property. <laughs> it's it's an accessor essentially. It's an accessor to grab the data, and then we're going and using the successor to grab the data or return the new data. It's using the turn context 
I'm assuming the data is um, attached to maybe user ID or some GUID or some something there. I haven't. I don't want to say I haven't looked into this. I know what this is doing. It's going to try to use the turn context to uh, grab the current uh, conversation data that we have been uh, saving and, and been using, or it's going to create a new one. And that's why we need to pass in turn context or uh, an anonymous method to, to create, or I say anonymous method, an arrow function to create the conversation data. Um, yeah, and then here it's just set them to response that that's not really important. And then await turn context send. Yeah, that's just returning the response. It's not. It's, it's just returning the response. Um, it's not really too important. These two aren't really too important. It's these two lines is the most important. And then the last thing that we need to do in order to persist data is actually this one line right here. Um, await conversation data. Save changes async. It's it's going to save the changes. <laughs> it's going to save the changes. Conversation will save again. It's it's like a wrapper for that memory object. So it lets us uh, save data, well, save the conversational data to the memory storage using the turn context. Um, here, this value is, a, yeah, it's just a force it. Um, it's, I, I always set it to volts. Um, I, I assume it doesn't really matter, set it to volts. Maybe some, if you're doing some trading shenanigans or some, something else, or maybe there's conflict, two people using the same conversation, maybe in a Teams chat or something like that. Um, I might come in handy for this false is fine, and I'm setting in the cancellation object. And that is pretty much it, really. It's nothing more to it. It's very straightforward, very simple, but it's also one of the very important things if you want to have like a long run conversation with a bot. Um, I've used it extensively in a flight bot project that I've written. I also wrote a blog and did a video on that as well. But it's look, it is it is what it is. It is what it is. And um, yeah, I think that's just it for a demo of the code. It's a very quick demo. There'll be a link to the repo as well on the blog post. It's yeah, it's it, it's <laughs> very 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 minimal changes. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for thanks for watching the video, and um, I'll see you later.